right. Greed works. Hello and welcome back to episode 9 of Let's Play Wall Street Raider. I'm Rakem, your host. And today uh, we're finally getting away from uh, all the small fry stocks that we've been holding on to and we're moving into the largest industry in the game, integrated oil. Now we spent all the last um, episode or a lot of the last episode deciding whether or not to put all of our money into it or to uh, diversify and I have made the decision after uh, reviewing episode 8 to go ahead and go all in to integrated oil and we're going to do our best to make as absolutely much money as we can in that industry. Now we're going to that's, that's what I'm going to do with my money. Now the bank is another matter. The bank is still going to bank on uh, Nippon. We're going to try to run Nippon up to uh, 1900 to 2000 per share. And if we're successful in doing that, then we'll sell it and uh, move on to something else. But uh, probably semiconductors, because semiconductors is looking pretty good and it's a fairly sizable industry. So in the meantime, we're going to have SunTrust buy up the, the loans that are um, the loan, the loans for the companies in the integrated oil industry. Once we've bought all of those, we will once again even out our loan investments into consumer loans and mortgages. But until then, we're going to buy up all the integrated oil loans. And we're hoping to do some more with commodities and interest rates, but these values are just not cooperating. The GDP growth is down, so basically everything's kind of settled in the middle and volatility is calming down and whatnot, so there's really not much opportunity. The only, the only commodity that's down is silver, and uh, it's getting close to its lowest point, but I really don't want to mess with it until it gets down to 14. So if it gets down to 14, we'll look at buying it. Um, spot crude, if it gets down to 40, we'll buy it. Wheat, if it gets down to four, three, somewhere in there, what is it, three? Yeah, about four, we'll buy it. And uh, corn, around two, is what we'd like to buy it at, though we bought it at three last time. So that's basically what go on, what's going on. The interest rates right now are easing, but despite that, in the last six months, it's gone from six and a quarter percent all the way up to eight and a half. It was all the way up to nine at one point. And uh, the reason why it's still high could have something to do with the GDP growth rate being a negative six. I'm not sure, but the industrial growth rate, you'll notice a lot of them are negative, and that's because the GDP growth rate is negative. Now, there are some exceptions. As always, pharmaceuticals, medical companies, uh, where's medical? Right there, uh, biotech are generally always high as are the tech stocks, the tech industries because uh, people are always going to need their medical treatments they're always going to want their technological technological gadgets um, the only other one that's really immune to GDP growth is uh, utilities because everybody needs to keep the lights on um, not that utilities is ever a major player in the game. It's always got a very small, steady growth rate, but uh, there's never really a lot of variance in it. But Anyway, so where we stand is we have uh, Royal Dutch, SunTrust, and um, Nippon. We've shorted a couple of stocks that we need to look at. We've had them forever. They've been going broke forever, but they still haven't declared bankruptcy that I know of. So let's take a look at them. And uh, this is Tech Resources. He's going to lose a huge amount. And he's finally underwater. So he's going to go bankrupt here pretty quick. Mazda. They still have 10 billion in assets. And that's up. At one point they had 9 billion. But he's still negative. But he's not as negative as he was. Let's take a look at the industry. Where's Mazda? Right here. So he's got a positive value. He used to be like a negative 
four or something like that. And now he's climbed up. He lowered his uh, he lowered his dividend. So I think it's time to cover him. Let's cover our position there. Oop, wrong one. All right, so we're gonna make a little over a billion. One and a half billion. So we did pretty good for that one. I think if we had sold it a quarter ago, we would have done better, but we were too busy looking at the uh, situation with Royal Dutch. All right, so let's take a look at the bank and make sure that the bank has enough cash so that if we spend any of this, he's not going to be in trouble. So we can spend uh, 200 billion here and the bank will still have a cushion. All right, so let's look at the oil industry. Exxon is going like crazy, but we just at the end of last episode, we froze his bank account, but he has 40 billion in cash. So it's going to take a little while for him to go down. We froze Luke Oil as well, because he's growing too fast. Um, he doesn't have any cash. He already has bonds. So in order to raise cash, he's got to pay those back first. So uh, he could do, because his stock price is so high, he could do an IPO, but... Uh, they rarely do that in the game. So the growth rate is 16%, but that's going to end sooner or later because the long-term growth rate is only 3%. So what our plan is, here's our here's uh, Royal Dutch. What our plan is, is all of these stocks that are trading at 120 and below, we're going to buy them all. All the ones that aren't fully owned, we're going to buy them and we're going to merge them so that we have the maximum amount of cash and assets invested in this industry and uh, we can control, have, a, have better control over what happens to it. All right, because our stocks are already trading pretty low, so any, any increase, the larger we start, the better off we are. All right, so Without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start with uh, Conoco Phillips here and take a look. And if he's owned less than 50%, we'll buy him. And that's true of all of them, but that's not the case with him. He's 100% owned. Let's move to EI Petroleum. All right, let's buy him. And I don't care what any of their stats are. I don't care what they've made. I don't care how much debt they have. I don't care what their management is. I don't care about any of that. We're just buying assets at this point. Uh, Royal Dutch is a much larger company, so its earnings and management um, rating and everything is the one that will take precedence. None of these are large enough to affect, have a large, have a very large effect on Royal Dutch. So none of that matters at this point. Okay. All right. So that's E and I. What's next? Mexico. All right, he's fully owned by Chevron, and Chevron is trading at too high a price. Yeah, here's Chevron. Well, he's not that high. We could buy him. How big is he? One hundred and fifty. Well, two hundred twenty-four billion. Yeah, that's a little high. Can't afford that right now. All right, let's see, what else? Okay, Conoco, or this is Phillips Petroleum. Uh, he's almost entirely owned. All right, let's look at the next one. Gulf, Gulf Oil, only 10% owned, so we're gonna buy him. Sunoco. Alright. Okay. 
and Murata Hess. This is Occidental. Wrong one. We just want the publicly traded stuff. We'll worry about buying out the minority shareholders later. Burlington Resources. He's trading kind of high. Imperial Petroleum. He's almost fully owned. Metro Kazakhstan's trading too high. Ashland Oil. Territorial Oil. McGee. It's owned by Texaco. And Devon en Energy. Of course it's trading kind of high too, but it's it's majority owned also. Alright, so now let's contribute all those stocks to Royal Dutch. All right, now we only have 9,000 or 9 billion in cash. And to keep the bondholders from blocking our mergers, in between each one of these um, liquidations or mergers, we're gonna have to buy back the bonds. So if we have to go into additional debt, we've got the credit to do that. So we'll just buy it back on credit. And then when we're all done, we'll contribute enough cash to bring their debt back into line with the uh, 3 to 1 ratio that I like to keep. 
And the reason why I like to keep that ratio, by the way, is so that if the industry is deteriorating, I can increase my earnings by paying off my debt rather than through growing my asset base. And so it's a way of staying profitable when the supply demand situation is deteriorating. Okay, so, um, so that's why I do it. So let's go ahead and start liquidating these, or actually we have to buy back these bonds first. All right, now all the ones that we own 100% of, we're just going to liquidate. Okay, and then in between we'll buy back any bonds that we inherit. Alright, now these we're going to merge with and then liquidate. Alright, tech, uh, tech resources just went broke, so we got 100% value off of that shorted stock, and it's now out of our per portfolio. Alright, so one fourth of this would be, uh, what is that? 108,000 or 108 billion. So we would need to pay back uh, 14 billion. Right? So uh, we're going to contribute $13 billion to it. And we'll have Royal Dutch pay down its debt. All right. So there we go. Now, let's see where we are management-wise. 
Our earnings are supposed to be up next quarter. We're supposed to make seven, you know, six to seven times what we made last time. The industry is deteriorating thanks to Exxon, but we're very capable. And we need to check and see if we have any interest rate, rate swaps as a result of all those mergers. And we do, so let's get rid of those. Now we inherited some futures, so let's take a look at those. Looks like they're all shorts, and the price is going down, so we're making money on all of them. And I see no reason to cancel any of them. The smallest one is this one for 116. Right, so those are fine. Uh, we don't want to do anything on that. Okay, so let's look at the industry one more time. We are now the market leader, but our stock price is flat. Now that should go up as we earn more money, and the growth rate's at 14% and falling. So I think what we want to do is we want to change our growth rate to 1 until he comes down which could be like one quarter or two. And we'll simply grow our grow our monthly or our, our quarterly earnings by paying the debt down. And once he reduces his growth rate and same thing with Luke Oil, then we can come down from our or come up from our one percent back up to ten or fourteen or whatever the market will bear. Alright, so this is a much smaller industry now in terms of the number of companies that are in it. And um, his price is coming down too, so we may pick him up if he falls back down to uh, like 110 or below. You know, we may have to wait another quarter for that to happen because he would have to be at like. 170, 170 billion. Stock price would have to be around 17 or below. All right, so let's change his growth rate to one. And we'll let it stand on that until the next quarter. So anything else we need to do? I don't think so. The let's take a look at the bank. The bank's good for now. The uh, let's list bank loans. So we've frozen Luke Oil and Exxon. And we have some companies frozen in the global telecommunications industry, but that's it. And our ratio is real, real good, 80-20. So, there's nothing else we need to do on the bank. Now, when we're canceling all of these contracts, of course, that's also driving down the income for the bank. Um... Companies going bankrupt, that's driving down the income for the bank. So that's another reason why the bank's income is coming down. If we go over to uh, interest rate swaps and view our list of contracts, we had, uh, what's 368 plus 367? That would be 735, right? All right, so 1... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 more. So, number of contracts, it doesn't tell you, so you just have to count it by page. And it's 17 per page times 26 plus 6. That's how many we have left. So out of the 735 that we started with, this is how many are left. That's how many companies either we took over and canceled or that went bankrupt. Right, so how many is that? 287 contracts, fewer contracts that we have now than when we started with. So that's why we're not making as much money as we were at the beginning of the contracts. Right? But we're still making a significant amount, still in the neighborhood of 250 to 300,000 every every quarter, which is better than we can do than we've done anywhere else. But um, our stock price on the bank is coming down as a result of the, the lower income. Absolutely nothing we can do about it. It's nothing to worry about. We're gaining plenty of net equity every month or every quarter. So uh, the main thing is, is that, you know, keep an eye on the interest rate, do it again. You know, keep that number of contracts as high as possible. All right, so we're going to turn on the ticker now, and the next one up is the bank, I think. Uh, this is March 10th, yeah, so we just went through Nippon. At least I think we did. Let's look. Nippon is May 18th, yeah, so the next one up is the bank. Where's the bank? Right here. Let's clear this out. That's all we have now. That's all we really care about is those three. Right? We've gotten rid of everything else. I mean, we could short something if we want to, especially with the GDP growth, this negative. Let's look and see. Let's see if there's anything we can um, short. So database search. Uh, this is not really geared towards searching for something that's losing money. This is geared towards something that's gaining money. So how would we, how could we use this to find something that's losing money? If you have any suggestions on how I can find companies that are losing money using this database search screen, please leave a comment below because looking for companies that are losing money is not an easy task as far as I'm concerned. And I would be more than happy to entertain ideas about how to use this to do that. All right, let's look at the industrial growth rates. It's not about what their return is right now. It's about what the trend is. You know, like we could be able to short companies in biotech even though the average is 40%. You know, it's not about what they're making right now, it's about what, what the trend is. Are they making money or losing it? That's the question. And you know, all of these guys, as high as their return is, they should be their, their stock should be going down because they're growing too fast because the growth rate's only 6%, but here they are growing. All these guys are growing at 40 on average. So like this one. Is he making money or losing money? He's losing money. But if you look on here, where is it? This one. He's making 51% on his assets. So how could he be losing money? right let's do this let's go um, to who owns what and see who has derivative contracts will that work all right I'm gonna look for ones that have the um, since this rate is supposed to be going down well, there's more of a difference between four and a half and eight and a half than there is ten and eight and a, eight and a half. So let's look at the short ones. 
So who's going to be big? I wonder if I couldn't short, I can't sort this by size of the company either. So I would just be going by memory. Let's look at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, see how big he is. All right, so he's half a trillion dollars. Right? Is he making money or losing it? He's making it. So that's not a good guide either. I don't know. I need help. You guys tell me how you, how you should do that, because I'm not sure. Okay, so let's just turn the ticker on and we won't worry about it. We'll just go to uh, the next earnings report for the bank, which is due on April the 4th, and I'll be right back. SunTrust made 555, and we now have. Oh, let's select the bank. We have uh, about 250 billion over uh, over my total, so we could invest, uh, say, about 100 100 billion in new loans. So uh, I closed paintbrush between the two episodes, so let me look at the uh, summary again so we have a list of our loans that we're going to go after. And uh, we've bought a bunch of these up now so they all fit on one page, that's convenient. Alright, so let me bring up paintbrush. Go back to the bank and do buy sell. I don't remember exactly where we left off, so this may be a bit of a trial and error at first. I know we have uh, BP, Devon, Luke Oil. We have all of those. Phillips, I'm not sure if we got. Phillips Petroleum we don't have, so let's buy it. Texaco. Imperial Petroleum. Conoco Phillips. McGee, they're going bankrupt, but we'll be happy to take them over, whatever's left of them, and Unical. And they're going broke too. Alright, so that's all of them. Now, before we do anything else, silver has fallen below 14, so it's time to buy it. All right, banks can't, I, I said something in an earlier episode about I'm playing with commodities and if I have the bank uh, deal in commodities, it was, I don't remember what I was talking about, but I made it sound like I, I might have the bank 
deal in commodities. Banks cannot deal in commodities. That's not something that's allowed. Corporations can deal in commodities, but banks cannot. I don't think insurance companies can either. Um, I'm not sure about holding companies, but regular companies that have an in, you know are involved in an industry can. And I can, of course, and I'm simply compartmentalizing my risk here. You know, I could open up another company to do this, but it would have to have a significant amount of money to do it. And if I start to lose money, I'm going to catch it right away and, and cover my positions. So if I start to lose money, I'm going to nip it right in the bud. But if I don't, you know, I don't have an, you know, the way I do that is I'm looking at my cash. If my cash starts to, to disappear, you know, it's right here in front of me all the time. If I have a company do it, I don't have any kind of indication other than these numbers down here. And I might not always be paying attention to those. So that's why I deal in commodities rather than having my companies do it is because I can always tell from my cash situation whether or not I need to check these numbers down here and see what they're, they're doing. And it's a lot easier when I'm only having to watch one number versus six. So anyway, that's why I do it. So let's uh, go to buy, sell, trade futures, silver, buy. And we're going to buy all we can because it's basically at its lowest point that it's ever been in the game. Right, so there they are. So if those go, if those double, we'll make what? 700, 700 billion? If it goes up to 28, 28, 29, somewhere in there. And uh, the high, highest it traded at was like 22, 23, maybe a little higher. Because that's a seven point gap. Oh, that's 28, not 20. So I guess uh, 29 or 30 is where it topped out at. So it could get there. You never know. We hope it'll go up above 14 anyway. He's been a little bit less volatile than any of the others. Gold is going up too, finally, after being flat for so long. But he's too high into his curve. I don't want to invest in it right now. And crude's going down. So if this goes down some more, we'll buy some of it. These are right. This is at its highest point. We might short this one. Short corn. Look at that. It's way up at... Uh, it's above 8 now. If it gets to... What is it at? 8, 18? If it gets to 850, we'll short it. Wheat's right in the middle. So the middle is right about here, a little about six. It's still a little too high for me to do it. Is it? Maybe I'm thinking of corn. Does corn go all the way down to two? Yeah, it went all the way down to two. So I guess this one we would normally do around three. So I guess it's getting pretty low, actually. I mean, it's at five. That's not too far to fall. So we'll keep an eye on that one. If it goes down to four, we'll take a closer look at it. All right, so enough with commodities. Let's turn the ticker back on. The next earnings report up is uh, Royal Dutch. And uh, the bank's now taking over Zoma, but we don't want Zoma. So we'll have SunTrust just sell it. There's no reason to hang on to it. It's very little money. We'll take a loss, but we don't care.
right, 233, up from 35 cents. And we didn't have to borrow any money. And look at all that extra money we have. 18 billion we, we have in excess. So let's go to Royal Dutch. Now they're saying our earnings are going to come down. And we're reasonably confident we're spending 9% and it's deteriorating. Now it's probably coming down because of the deteriorating. So there's not necessarily anything that we need to do differently. Let's look at the industry. He's still growing at 52%. He's still growing at 19 and he has increased to 19. And at the same time, the growth rate has dropped to zero. Right, so we're gonna leave our growth at 1%. We're actually gonna increase our R&D to 12% to be above him, to be above Exxon. And we need to look and see how much cash he has left because he had 48 billion before and he's gone up. So even with that exorbitant rate, he's gone up. He made 41 billion. He paid 20 billion on his loan and he still has an excess. Wow. All right, well, this may be a little tougher than I thought. All right, Luke Oil dropped their growth down to negative 4% now. So let's freeze BP, and we'll up our growth rate, or I mean our R&D rate. All right, so R&D to 11, or excuse me, to 12. Let's go over to the bank and freeze BP. All right, that's about all we can do. If he's going to grow at 52%, he's going to kill. He's going to kill the whole industry, including himself. I mean, look at this guy, Kermagee, he's all the way down to 69%. Texaco owns him. Where's Texaco? Here's Texaco. Somebody owned him too. Chevron. Who owns Chevron? Nobody. And he's, travel he's uh, trading at twice his value. Okay, well we're going to have to write this out. We can pay back some of our loan and that'll help. So let's do that. And uh, this, is, this is just what we're going to have to live with. Now we will continue to pay down our loan rather than grow. And that should help us uh, at least stay, you know, somewhat steady in our increase in earnings. It'll at least keep us from going negative. And uh, the only thing that I would hope for is that this 12% will put us in the very capable category right away rather than slowly. But uh, if I increase it, I'm just gonna lose money, so I don't wanna do that. If I increase R&D above 12. Okay, well. That's sort of uh, mixed news. I wouldn't have expected him to make more money expanding at a 53% rate when the demand is not growing at all. But uh, I guess that's the case, so. Next up is Nippon in May. So we're gonna fast forward to the Nippon the earnings report.
Okay, so we have another message regarding this trade war storyline that we've been following. So, after we withdrew from uh, GATT and NAFTA, and by we I mean the U.S., the United States Congress of Idiots, um, they enacted uh, heavy tariffs on most kinds of imported goods, led to a chain reaction of retaliatory, retaliatory tariffs and other non-tariff trade barriers being erected by a number of European countries, Canada, Mexico, and much of Asia. Initially, the barriers were aimed only at the United States, which started this crisis, but many countries already hurt by the loss of U.S. markets for their goods have in recent weeks extended their tariff and other barriers to reduce imports from other countries as well, so that now a virtual trade war between all the major trading nations has resulted. The trading impasse is perhaps best symbolized by yesterday's actions of a battalion of U.S. Marines in Southern California stretching barbed wire across the now-closed border entry gates between California and Tijuana, Mexico. The situation was not helped by last month's attempted peace conference on global trade, which was to be held in San Francisco to try to head off an impending all-out trade war. The conference was broken up before it could get started by massive violent demonstrations by the anti-globalist, anti-capitalist, anti-trade, anti-American workers, democratic anarchy and peace, jihad and social justice front. Oh my God, they need a new name. Which put over 50 of the international delegates in the hospital with wounds from shootings, beatings or stabbings and resulted in the deaths of three trade representatives from the Ukraine, Brazil and Angola who were unlucky enough to get caught in a crossfire during a pitched battle between squads of sharpshooters from the San, San Francisco Police Department and the... and that's the anacronym for that big long name up there and the PJSJ front. So... I'm not sure... Okay, so there is one period here. So this whole paragraph is two sentences. Man, that's a mouthful. Okay, so... Let's get to the end here, because this is a lot of reading. Um, the peace conference was canceled. San Francisco was placed under martial law. And the delegates that survived the peaceful protest had to return to their respective countries empty-handed. So essentially... Most international trade, other than in weaponry, has come to a screeching halt for the present. And see what happened, has happened to our GDP. It's down to a negative 10 now. So it looks like um, everything's going to drop except gold. And, uh, wow. Wow. So things are going to be kind of tight. So the bank should do well, but everybody else is going to be struggling to make money. All right, so uh, let's keep an eye on this price here of crude and uh, the interest rate, which seems to be going back up now that I say that. That's too bad. We would like to do some more swaps. All right, Nippon. 1665. And we had a $15 billion surplus. Okay. And let's go take a look at the industry. Negative 9% growth for this year. Pretty much right in line with the GDP. Now normally, global telecommunications doesn't have a problem, regardless of what this number is. But these are extraordinary times, so apparently it's affecting everybody. So, since our return is only 9.6%, there's a couple things I want to do. One, I want to kill my growth. I want to shut it all the way down to zero. 
Second, I want to reduce my R&D. So we're reasonably competent now and we're just going to have to live with that for the time being. So we're going to go to zero growth. This is going to kill our stock price, by the way. We're up to almost a thousand. Um, your growth percentage is part of that calculation. You know, he's very the the developer of this game is very secretive about what all goes into calculating what ha you know how this stock price is arrived at. But the major factors are your credit rating, your growth rate, and your earnings, whether or not you're going up or down, and uh, for how long. So if if you have been going steadily going up for a year, you get a certain bump, and then if you have been going steadily up for five years, obviously you get an even better bump in stock price. But anyway, okay, so productivity, we're going to take it all the way down to three. All right, and um, we're going to hope that this trade situation resolves itself quickly because otherwise our income is going to drop and we're going to have to hang on to this stock longer than we want. But it's not like there's a better situation anywhere else either. So we can just stick with this one or we can buy another turkey somewhere else, but you know, this one we have it in pretty good shape. It's just uh, the growth rates that are, that are messed up. Alright, so um, let's see what's happening with these commodities. We're down to 57 here. And corn is at 746. So it hasn't quite gotten up to 8. We missed it being up above 8 just a month ago, but we need to keep a close eye on it because we'll short it if it gets up above 8. Looks like it all got all the way to 9 almost. And we missed it. So we need to keep an eye on that and do it when we get when we see it. Silver's up, gold is up. And wheat is now at six. So our hopes that it would drop from 450 down to three were unfounded or unrealized. All right, so let's take the ticker back on. And the next earnings report up is the bank. All right, so. Um, are we still very capable? No, we dropped. All right, well, we may have to up it again if, our, if we don't get back there. So I'm going to turn the ticker back on, and I will pause it if any of these numbers hit the targets we're looking for. Otherwise, I'll be back on uh, July 4th. All right, so SunTrust did okay. It's still trending downward, but with fewer agreements in place. You know, we expected that. So uh, let's look and see what it has to spend on uh, anything. Because I think it's time to put some more money into consumer loans and um, mortgages. All right, so we got a good amount of cash. We need to keep 364 in our inventory here, so that leaves us with roughly 480. So a 20% surplus would be 200 billion, so that means 280, so we can put 190 billion in each one of these. 
So let's buy 190 billion of uh, loans in each category. So consumer, 190 billion. Prime mortgages. So 190 minus 38 would be what, 152? And uh, subprime, 38. All right. So that's pretty close. We still have 100 billion I guess I miscalculated a little bit there because we only have uh, 100 billion surplus, but it's close enough. All right, next one up is Royal Dutch. Still going to keep an eye on these. This keeps going down to like 57, then back up to 61. This one's hovering around 750. It got up to 760, but that's about as high as it's gone. All right, Royal Dutch, dollar seventy-four. Now the real question is, what is it going to make next month or next quarter? Because if we keep coming up with this much excess cash, this loan is going to be gone in a year. All right, so let's take a look at what next month. One fifty-five, down slightly. Let's look at the industry because the GDP has gone from negative 9.6 to negative 6.8. Okay, we've got a memo. And this is a cheat scenario. And I've seen this one before and I hate it. Right now I wish I had turned the cheat menu off because there is really no upside to this cheat scenario. We have a choice. We can retrofit our tanker fleet with double hulls at a cost of $102 billion, or we can reflag in Liberia or Panama, which would make us exempt from the U.S. environmental safety regulations that require double hulls. Every time I have taken advantage or said yes to, to reflagging every time I I have had my tankers cause a major disaster every time I absolutely hate this scenario I mean it's true to life it can happen you know it could be a random event I don't it doesn't have to be part of a cheat scenario it's just you know people make mistakes he could run aground, and if he doesn't have a double hull, that means an oil spill with major catastrophe, you know, major cost involved, like the BP spill in the Gulf of Mexico with their underwater drilling platform, you know. Um, I, and I never have a, I never know what to do here, because I mean, I don't want to pay a hundred billion. Um, that's going to mess us up. Of course, we're already messed up. So, I'm inclined to just pay it because at least I know what that cost is going to be. Because if I don't retrofit and we have an accident, and I'm telling you, every time I've ever seen this one and, and said no, we've had an accident, or said yes, we've had an accident. So... At least I know how much this is going to cost. So I'm going to tell it no and just pay it. All right, so now we're going to have a negative and a lot more money that we owe the bank. But, you know, I don't know what else we could have done. If we say no, it's just going to be a disaster and there's no end to what we could have had to spend. So, all right, uh, UCL has gone bankrupt. 
Unical. And I believe they're in the integrated oil industry. And they are right there. All right, so I'm going to buy that from SunTrust. And give it to Royal Dutch. And then liquidate it. Okay. So Royal Dutch is in big trouble. It's still very capable, but the situation is deteriorating, and now we had this big expense. So our stock price is going to bottom out probably around the 75% range and it's going to stay below 100% for two quarters until we show a decent profit and then the following year if we show any profit at all um, our stock price should go up because it'll be compared to a year in which we lost money so basically 2021 is now a lost year for, for Royal Dutch and we just have to come back in 2022 and it'll probably be 2023 before we can sell it okay and that's what that scenario did now let's go ahead and turn off the damn thing because we don't need any more of those all right now let's look at these i want to look at oil because uh it's okay well it might still be going down but um, if it stops at around 50 I'm gonna go ahead and short it I mean buy it that's what I mean buy it gold has skyrocketed upward so we want to keep an eye on that and when it stops growing up let's see what was the highest it's ever been you know like 2500 yeah, right around there, 2,500. So we're gonna watch and see if it gets to 2,400. Obviously, we want to short it. Um, if it shows signs of slowing down, it's kind of showing signs of slowing down right here. But it's just been, you know, a couple of weeks and a lot of volatility this month, a little bit this month, and now let's see what this month does, and we'll make a decision. Okay, silver's going up. And corn has hit eight, which I think was our target, wasn't it? Yeah, eight was our target. So let's short it. that five well we only did four of silver I thought we did five hmm okay so I didn't I didn't cover one on accident did I or sell one on accident could have sworn we did five okay so uh that's corn. We're still going to keep an eye on uh, spot crude. We want it to go down into the 40s. Somebody's borrowing a lot of money from us. Don't know who. We can go look.
could be mobile. Well, Royal Dutch, of course, that's who's borrowing a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't come to mind right away. Okay, so let's... Uh... Well, that's disappointing. Okay, so who's up next? Up next is uh, Nippon, right? So, let's see. We're just having good news all around. All right, we're going to turn the ticker back on. We'll pause it at uh, August 18th unless the oil, cr oil price goes down to 50. Well, look at there. We're already there. Go down just a little bit more and we will buy you. Well, he's going back up. All right, so Nippon had a decrease as we expected. Big one, unfortunately. We're down over 30%. But uh, we didn't have to borrow. We we're just uh, accumulating our cash at this point. We did make money, we just didn't make as much. And next quarter it's scheduled to go back up. So that's good. We're very capable, but the situation in the industry is worsening. So it's time to either grow negative or start throwing on the brakes to some of these guys in the industry that are still growing despite a negative demand rate. Let me think about this for a second. So we have a 31% stake and we're making 18%, which isn't bad really, considering the conditions. Now, since our income is going up, I'm just gonna leave it, but uh, I'm gonna buy some stock in these, um, in these uh, favorably priced um, companies that have a high dividend. So Verizon, if there's any to be had in SK Telecom, we'll buy, um, we're gonna buy 19% of each one, just short of control, so that we can benefit from those high dividends. And when this industry rebounds, we'll also get a, a gain on their stock prices. Because these prices are nice. These are 75%. Those are great. All right, so let's see how big SK Telecom is and whether or not there's any. Okay, there is. So we'll buy 19% of him. And uh, who else? British Telecom. Telecom France. He's got a negative, but we're only interested in the dividend at this point. Telefonica.
Japan Telecom. Of course, his dividend's kind of low. Verizon's is high, though. Let's get him. Alcatel Lucent. All right, we'd have to borrow to, to buy him, so let's not do that. How much money we have left? Four, four, four billion. Okay, we bought him. We bought him. So, Telecom Italia, he's got a nice dividend, 10%, 11%. Alright, I think that's it. So, here's our stocks, and these are the dividends we're receiving. So we don't, we don't have to worry about whether these stocks go up or down as far as our income is concerned because we only can take care about the dividend. Okay, We're going to worry about the capital gains later. This is just a way for us not to have uh, cash and to make more than the 1% than, than simply having cash would have. So obviously these percentages are better than 1%, so that's that's what the idea is. All right, so since our goal, we're going up, hopefully we'll keep going up, but I don't see how that's gonna happen with the way the industry looks. But that's the best we can do. And I just realized that I didn't turn the recording of the video on. So you just missed all of that stuff that I just did. So basically the earnings report for Nippon came up and um, we earned 1150 and the earnings report for next quarter is going up. So I took all of our cash, which was in the neighborhood of 23 billion, and I bought all of these stocks. Now I'll figure out how to present that to you in the video, whether I leave the audio intact or not, but this is what I did. So I have 19% of these six stocks, and I'm only concerned about the dividend. I'm not concerned about the value in millions. I just want to keep our income, our, our quarterly income high. Not concerned about my net worth at this point. Okay, so let's proceed. We're going to turn the ticker back on. And um, he went all the way down to 50 and then back up to 54. And has just hovered there. So there you go, 50. All right, cool. So... Let's stop the ticker and we're going to sell him, we're going to buy him. Because I don't think he's going to go much lower and if he does it's not that big a deal. Okay and we're going to get it at 49.77 so that's good. Is that five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So that's all of them. So 
Silverback to 14? Oh no, that's what I bought it for. It's on its way down too. It was up in the 17s earlier. All right, what is our interest rate doing? Because uh, it's tightening now. Hmm. Gold's coming down, silver's coming down. Nope, went back up to 17 and a half. You crazy metal, you. All right, so uh, let's turn the ticker back on. Next one up is the bank. Time to clean up our shortcut list too. 408 million, so we need to buy some more loans here and here. But we're too close to our own cash level, so. Gotta wait for some more money. So we'll fast forward now to uh, October the 4th. Sun, SunTrust made uh, a little over $5 a share and now has, well because my cash went down thanks to oil dropping and silver dropping, we have what, 300000 maybe, 250000 that we can put towards these. Look at that prime rate. We're down to four and a quarter despite it tightening. Man, these are some crazy numbers when the GDP falls. We need to buy it some medication. All right, so let's uh, put let's put just like fifty thousand on each one of these. That'll be good enough. Okay, we don't need to do more than that. Let's watch this interest rate here. Because if it falls to 4%, we're going to do some swaps. All right, here's our big uh, big hole in the ground for us to fall into, 625 negative. We lost $62 billion last quarter. Somehow we still have money on hand, I guess because uh, we, we borrowed the money and then we made income. So uh, we can repay a portion of it. So let's go to our Royal Dutch company and pay some of that back. What are our futures doing? We're still making money, right? Okay. So we probably need to cover since this is down this low now. We need to cover and then sell it. I'm losing money. He may as well make some. Let's do that. That could get him out of debt real quick. Trade futures, crude oil, 
Bye. And I don't know how much this is going to cost and whether or not you can do five full ones. Only two billion? Yeah, we can do all five. As long as it doesn't fall, you know, fall to 20, we should be okay. Is that five or one more? One, two, three, four, five, okay. You went all the way up to eight, I think. No. No, but you got above six. falling. What did we short him at? Eight, right? We shorted him. 888 we shorted him at. So good. We're making some good money. Alright, so I'm going to turn the ticker back on. Keep a close eye on this. The next one to come up is um, Nippon. And we'll probably end the part when we get to nip on unless we're doing some more swaps. So Nippon came back from the brink. We um, are back up into $14 range. Not as good as our $16 quarter, but you know, way up from 11. Let's see what next month is supposed to bring. Another $14 month. So what is that for a year? That's 52. Not quite what we need to beat last year. All right, so we've got another 15 billion. Um, it's unprofitable and worsening still, but we are very capable. So let's take a look at the industry. Well, China Mobile has seen fit to reduce their growth rate. That's good to see, but uh, AT&T is still growing. but he should come to his senses. And our, our percentage went up, so we don't need to change anything. We can just let it ride because our percentage is going up, so our earnings should continue to go up. We could buy some more of these if we wanted to with our excess cash. Let's see, who do we own? We own Verizon and SK Telecom are the two big ones. So who else is good to buy? Who else has a good AT&T probably? They're, they're probably too much though. Let's see how much they are. 15% of that, so 1% would be 1700 times, 50, times 19. So uh, 32, 32 billion. Right? We don't have enough. So, Nokia, Verizon we have, their dividend is too small, them we have, who else don't we have? This guy, right? His dividend's on the small side, but he's affordable. 
But if I remember, he was big because he has subsidiary companies. Let's take a look. No, he's not too big. I mean, he does have Lucent, but... Let's see, 36... Let's see, divide this by 100, so that's 368 times 20. So that'd be 6 billion. We could do that. His dividend is how much? Right, uh, dividend yield, 375. Well, that's not very good, but he's cheap. Let's go ahead. Money spent on them is going to earn more than uh, money in the bank. Seven and a half billion. So we'll just keep the other seven and a half. Unless there's something else to spend it on. He's got a good dividend. Problem is, I think he's going broke. Yeah, he's losing money. His dividend is 5%. All right, well, he's not very much. I mean, 19% of him isn't even 200, billion, 200 million, so we can risk that much. All right, so that's all we're gonna do with him. And our estimate is now up to 15, which will beat last year. So we're doing all right. I guess some other people must have come down on their growth rates. Either that or this one up. China Mobile is only 85% now. I think we should have the bank buy 19% of that and contribute it to, uh, to Nippon. Yeah, we've got the money. We'll have to refigure what our target price is now because we've invested more money in it. But um, you know, we're playing a an Adam an Adams type economy style where we're trying to keep the industry improving, and that just doesn't just help us; it helps everybody. So, if these companies rise in stock, it helps us as well. So since we're not only helping ourselves, but helping everyone, we might as well profit from everyone as well. All right, so we're going to call this a part. Um, we've got more to do on uh, Royal Dutch in its recovery. The stock price is up. Um, we're down as far as our commodities are concerned on the uh, crude oil, but we're up on wheat, or I mean, excuse me, on corn. And uh, silver has started to slip. Just when we thought we were going to get to do some interest rate swaps, the interest rate jumped up to 8%. So it's another waiting game for us to restart that uh, whole scenario all over again. But uh, overall, we're doing well. And um, you know, we'll just do our best to continue. We finally, you know, we the money we lost last episode, we've gained back and then some. So. You know, come back and we'll see if we can't turn these uh, this this integrated oil company around after that hundred billion dollar loss. And um, Nippon's up to twelve hundred, and I think our target price at this point is going to be somewhere in the twenty five hundred range. So I think we're about halfway there. We'll do the calculations next time. So as always, please like and share. This is Raykum saying, have a good one.